And we're back. And this section is the super powered section, if you want to call it. Yeah, yeah, the more traditional non uh, non cosmic powered. Yes. Super powered, or you know, possibly alien in origin, but not operating in space. <laughs> alien down here on Earth. Yeah. Right. <laughs> New Superman number three, made in China, part three. I'm going to be honest, at, when I first started reading New Superman, I wasn't very excited about it. But these last two issues, I'm warming up to New Superman's story. Yeah, yeah. Um, Kong Kanan's Superman is, is starting to get his own universe of characters yes. filling up very quickly. And now now we get the, the Justice League of China's first mm -hmm. enemy team, which is the Freedom Fighters of China. Yeah. Consisting of... Uh, what is it, Blue Condor, who yes. he met previously in uh, mm -hmm. New Superman number one. We have Ghost Lady, mm -hmm. and uh, the leader is the, the Flying Flying, flying Dragon? Dra flying Dragon, yeah. Or Flying Dragon General? or Something, something. I think he had uh, General in his name. Yeah, and it's, it's it, for me it was kind of funny because we have the Justice League, mm -hmm. and with this we have a lineup that looks very similar to the classic team, the Freedom Fighters, because mm -hmm. we have Blue Condor, Ghost Lady, the classic Freedom Fighters had Phantom Lady and Black Condor. Right. You know, it, it's just sort of a, a funny, I don't know if it was intentional or not, but it, it's, it's an interesting parallel between mm -hmm. them. And it'll be interesting to see what is the Freedom Fighters trying to do. I mean, they're clearly going after these private backers of the uh, mm -hmm. Ministry of Self-Reliance. Yes. That was... Um, you know, the one woman they saved in the previous issue yes. was uh, a backer. Um, the Justice League of China attempts to save the third one in this mm -hmm. one and end up dealing with that guy's giant sea monster that he has. Yes. <laughs> and and he ends up being taken hostage by the, the Freedom Fighters. So it looks like they're trying to maybe... Um, you know, cut the base right off the Ministry of Self-Reliance. Mm -hmm. You know, just to chop them off right at the base right. so they can't function anymore. Dr. Omen also has a very heated discussion with um, August General. Yeah, the August General in Iron. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so we've, we finally have a, a appearance of a Great Ten mm -hmm. member in this. And he's not a fan of her no. at all. I mean, he considers her to be... I mean, he, she should be in prison in his mind. She mm -hmm. shouldn't certainly shouldn't be leading her own no. superhero team. And they have some interesting divisions on what superheroes should be. I mean, she wants them to follow the Western, mm -hmm. the established Western tradition of, of right. superheroes to prepare for presumably Western threats. And, you know, here's the August General and Iron representing a, a purely Chinese team. Yes. You know, where they're not superheroes or super functionaries. Mm -hmm. You know, they're they're agents of the government. They're not meant to be heroes. Right. Because a hero would be someone worth venerating. And mm -hmm. that would be that would be against uh, communist ideals. So it, I, from that from that discussion I really kinda thought maybe some somewhere down the road the Justice League of China might end up facing the Great Ten at some point. Yes. You know, maybe his enemies, maybe not, but uh, it sounds like they're going to have a face-off at some point. Oh, definitely, definitely. That great interaction. At the very beginning of the issue, when uh, New Superman introduced himself and he said, this is the Justice League of China, we see reactions from the DC Universe. Lex Luthor, we see... Batman, mm -hmm. and we see uh, Perry General, White. Yep, Perry yeah, White, and then we see General does Iron. A spit here. take, yeah. Yes, and that's what I liked about it is where this wasn't just in its own pocket. Mm -hmm. It was. It's going to have ramifications on the whole DC universe. Mm -hmm. These heroes, I thought that was cool. I liked it how where they were. They were starting. The three of them are starting to talk, and um, Keenan is being honest of I just wanted to be cool I wanted to do this mm -hmm. and, and he wanted to impress uh, Lady Lan yes <laughs> I, but I, I really like that um, I like the interaction between new Batman new Wonder Woman and new mm -hmm. Superman what was your thoughts when they took the villain that they captured to the underwater crab shell yeah yeah they're essentially their 
the Chinese super prison, prison for meta, yeah, meta just humans. like all the other, uh, yes. you know, all the other metahuman prisons. And it's it it's pretty cool because, I mean, not only does it imply that she's being Sunbeam is being locked up, mm-hmm. possibly indefinitely, yes. with no trial, which right. she's not a fan of. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's she tries to, um, you know, reason with Batman as she, mm-hmm. as she goes through that, and that's you know, I mean, kind of fits with. Chinese, um, you know, yep. Chinese communist way of thinking. And while we're there, we see a few kind of tantalizing things happen. Mm-hmm. Is in one corridor, they walk down, and you can see in a cell, there's a guy who's wearing basically Kanan's yep. uniform. I mean, he has the same symbol. He looks kind mm-hmm. of a lot like Kanan. Maybe that's like a failed previous Superman attempt, yep. maybe. And then another one, after they're sort of done, another villain there looks out and sees Kanan and he recognizes mm-hmm. him as his father's son. Yes. And it sounds like he might have a grudge against Kanan's dad. Mm-hmm. And so I, that it sets up a much wider right. world for him. Mm-hmm. You know, some other pathways to explore. I mean, what what happened to all the previous test subjects yep. for the new Superman formula? And who is this dude who wants, you know, maybe wants revenge against mm-hmm. Kanan's dad? Or does he want to help Kanan's dad? Yep. I mean, we know Kanan's dad is trying to take out the Ministry of Self-Reliance. Maybe this is an old ally. Maybe it's an old acquaintance. Who knows? One thing I thought was, an, another plot point I thought was interesting was Dr. Ullman had said to Kanan when he said, I am Kanan Kong. I am the new Superman. All right, you just outed yourself. And he was about to ready to out the secret identities of new Batman, new Wonder Woman. <laughs> and she said, you know, now we're going to need to help out your father. Mm-hmm. Well, why is that? Well, because you just announced who you were. Yeah. And now, so when do you think that um, you're, um, when do you think that you're going to um, have to defend your father? We're going to have to defend a month or two months from now. Okay. He didn't think about that. Yeah. But when his father saw him on TV, they were saying that he was wearing the hexagon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was wearing the hexagon symbol. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and his dad seemed to recognize that as... Maybe tying him to the the Ministry of Self Reliance. Mm-hmm. I mean, didn't say it on panel, but it looks like he might know that connection right now. Yes. So, yeah. Well, that's that's a, a pretty st- sticky situation he Kenan's gotten himself into. What did you think about when Kenan told New Batman, "Well, I'm the one wearing the S on my." Uh, chest and they say that's not an S. Yeah. I think that's a pretty strong plot point because I was looking at it a little bit further and it looks kind of like maybe it's a symbol for a snake. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was thinking too when I read it maybe that was a reference to sort of the uh, the Man of Steel yes. interpretation of the S symbol that it's mm-hmm. it doesn't represent an S. It's the, the symbol of the House of L. Yes. And maybe because um, I think it's New Batman says you know you should really do your homework after yes. that, which, which numerous ones say they mm-hmm. should, he should do his homework because he doesn't seem to know that much about Superman. He thinks he has, what is it, cold vision? Yeah. And when no, he's trying yeah, to think cold, all the... Heat vision, the, cold vision. Yeah. Like, Superman wait, even that's a power? A no, right. I should really do my homework. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so maybe maybe that's it. Who knows? That would be, a, that would be an interesting plot point. Because that was brought up see. twice yeah. in that issue. I like in New Superman number three, or New Superman in general... At first, I was, whoa, and then I'm reading it. I'm liking it. I'm, it's growing on me. The story is taking us to another location. It brings in more diversity, and these characters are interesting. And Dr. Omen is a figure, I almost kind of feel she's a little bit Lex Luthorish in style. Mm-hmm. But I think we are seeing another part of the DC universe starting to grow. Yeah, which I think is really cool. Yeah, this is this title is definitely starting to create its own little mm-hmm. universe, and it, yes. and that universe is starting to be tied together with the rest mm-hmm. of the DC universe too. And this is one of your favorite titles, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely dig this, and I'm still definitely digging Batman. Right. Yeah, the, uh, the Chinese Batman is mm-hmm. might be one of my favorite Batmans. Action Comics number nine sixty three, Superman, meet Clark Kent. <laughs> Well, this story, as you see, Clark Kent is the focus. Clark Kent tells us that, well, he tells Perry, he tells a uh, press conference that New 52 Superman 
uh, quite a few months ago in the storyline when Clark Kent was investigating Gentrocron to go into hiding and it was going to be dangerous and he'll take the place. Do you believe that? <laughs> I mean, he seems sincere. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it seems really unlikely that in, you know, mm -hmm. an alien from a distant planet who lands on Earth would just so happen to look identical to, right. his, you know, with the exception of glasses, to a right. guy who works in a newspaper in the same town that mm -hmm. he ends up living in. I don't know. That That's... It's very convenient, mm -hmm. I guess would be the word for it. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, this this Clark doesn't seem to be up to no good. I no, mean, he doesn't, he doesn't seem to be a bad guy. He seems essentially to be almost like you ripped Superman in half. Right. You, know, you have the Superman half, you have the Clark Kent half. Mm -hmm. He seems to be on the up and up. But this backstory, I don't know. And then to be investigating a, a company that clearly does genetics... Mm -hmm. stuff makes me think okay maybe did they try to clone him did they just get the human half right uh, who knows that'll be interesting to see everyone is wondering the people in the crowd are wondering you can't be clark kent superman lex luther is wondering who this person is jimmy and perry seem to be convinced mm -hmm. um clark kent can this clark kent kind of handles himself pretty well when he's going through gentricon he mentions is something that Lois would do. Yeah. Um, so individually, does it make, like you had said, does this make him the uh, Lois and Lois, New 52 Lois, New 52 Clark Kent, are they about the same person maybe with the risk that they're willing to take? If it's, this is indeed Clark Kent, Clark Kent, no. Yeah. Yeah, it sort of makes makes him almost like the, the male counterpart to Lois. Yeah. I mean, this is a character who doesn't mm -hmm. have superpowers and is just getting through right. by you know, improvising, and mm -hmm. he does pretty darn well for being a right. classically bumbling reporter. He he waylays quite a few guys right. with, he you knows. know, just calling on his Smallville skills. Mm -hmm. He also takes a lie detector test, mm -hmm. and he passes, and it finds out, we find out that Batman in Disguise is the one that administered the lie detector test. Yeah. And as um, Clark Kent had to sneak into Gentr uh, Gentricon's uh, building, and he meets the guard up on top. They fight, and he gets thrown off the building. Superman catches him and says, we need to talk. Yeah. The next issue is going to be very, um, very interesting as we see the conference, the, um, the first meeting between Clark Kent and Superman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first, first really extended one, because they, they met right. real briefly when, you know, he was fighting Doomsday and... and Clark said, hey, you, you know, you told me to go away. What are you doing right, back? Yep. And, and Superman says, I have no clue what you're talking about. Let me handle mm -hmm. Doomsday. We'll talk about it later. Right. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if Superman believes him or if he maybe knows another piece to the puzzle or if he's just as, just mm -hmm. as clueless to all this as Clark seems to be. Yes. I also think that Gentricon Kron had something to do with Doomsday because they were doing a lot of experiments. Yep. and they mentioned that this was the first place we saw Doomsday. Yep, was right yep. There. that's what Jimmy mentions, but the, yes. that was right where um, you know Doomsday first appeared. Mm -hmm. Also, we see an appearance in a few panels of a mysterious person with a beard and a hat, yeah. and a red hat, and they make it a point to point him out yep. a couple times in this issue. Yeah, he's in, he's in the press conference crowd, yes. where you know, they're showing some of the, the crowd mm -hmm. sort of heckling Clark while he's on stage. And then at the very end, when Superman saves Clark, he yes. he makes some comment like, "Huh," or you know, like, "Oh, I see." Right you know, now it happens. It, it it's so it's so conspicuous. Mm -hmm. It's a lot like because we had a very similar looking bearded guy in a hat in Detective Comics, right? Not that long ago, who's also very conspicuous and doesn't say very much. Yeah, and it makes you wonder who is this? Right. One thing that came to mind for me would be Rorschach. Because, I mean, in, mm. in the original Watchmen series, mm -hmm. we see him unmasked okay. through almost every issue where he's, you know, he's out with his mm -hmm. sign saying that the end of the world is coming, yep. and we never yep. know that's yep. him until, until he end. gets unmasked uh, when he gets arrested. Like, mm -hmm. oh, that was him all along. Yep. Could that be him maybe with a beard, maybe, you know, disguising his identity a little bit, but that would that would that would be really cool 
that if it be, happened, but I, I don't know. Who knows? That would be. Wow. Yeah. I, I think Action Comics' this next art about Superman, Clark Kent, is going to be interesting. And I think the mystery on who the man in the hat will be expanded upon. I'm liking it. Yeah. And it continues to yeah, be. Yeah, me too. Yeah. It continues yeah. to be, huh. Yeah, definitely, definitely rooting for Clark Kent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, way, right. way to go, dude. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to take our last break. And when we come back, we will discuss Wonder Woman number six and Superwoman number two. We'll be back in just a moment. 